So I think I have enough circles and I gave this some time to dry. So you probably, if you print your circles and then you feel like they look kind of wet or you notice you touch them and they're kind of getting on your fingers, you want to wait a while before you move on to actually painting them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to treat each circle as a separate shape to be painted. So if you notice when I was putting the paint on the cap to print with, I used a larger brush here, I'm using a smaller one. So if you don't have a different size brush, you can use the same one. You just want to be careful that you're only using the tip of it. We've talked about different brush stroke techniques, so I know I can trust you guys to think about how to do that the right way. So I'm going to choose a color. So let's say I want to do orange. Well, what I want to think about is because I'm using the same shape, I'm using the idea of repetition. So I want to paint so I stay inside there. So first what I'm going to do is move along the inside edge of the circle. Once I've done that, I give myself kind of a fence to stay inside of or a border. So then the inside part, I can paint that a little faster. Now I think some of you are probably thinking that I should use orange again, which I agree. If I'm showing repetition, I can do that with more than one element of design. The lines are all curved that make the circles, so those lines are getting repeated, so that's showing repetition. But then the circles themselves, those shapes, that's an element of design that's getting repeated. So let's say I'm going to go over here. Now this one presents a little problem I have to solve because I have my line, and like I said before, you want to stay along the inside line, but this line touches another line. So what happens is it actually creates a new shape. So here, this is a shape by itself. But then across the line, this is trapped inside there. That is a totally new shape. So instead of me painting it orange, orange would make it look like it's one shape. What I'm going to do is that's my opportunity to use a new color and show that I created a new shape with that. So let's say I choose blue. So I'm loading my brush. Then I'm going to the circle. And I'm going to stay inside the line for this new shape here. But then again, since I'm sort of dealing with this idea of repetition, because you'll notice Vasily Kandinsky in the samples I showed you, he repeated circles, but he also repeated colors quite a bit too. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use blue somewhere else. So I'm going to go along this edge. And fill this one in. And if I wanted to, I could actually use blue a third time. So again, I'm showing repetition because although I see a lot of circles on here, only one of these is actually a blue circle. The other one, this looks almost like a leaf shape or an oval. And then this one is a semicircle, so I use the same color, but I did not use it in exactly the same way. So you're going to continue painting your shapes, remembering that when one circle overlaps into another one, it actually creates a second shape. So here, or actually I should say a third, even though I've got one circle here and one circle here, that's two circles, there's actually three shapes. One, two, three. So I need to find a new place to use yellow. So you will continue painting your shapes, and I'm going to continue painting mine.